Hi guys. Um, this is a video for lesson five three where we're drawing trend lines. Okay. Um, so let's say that we're looking at this scatter plot and it's uh, the population of black panthers in the jungle, and it's measured, you know, recorded, you know, over a yearly basis. And this is the graph we're looking at. Okay. Um, we can generally see that there's a negative association. It's a downward pattern of the dots. Um, and in class, you've probably seen me draw, you know, kind of show that pattern or highlight that pattern by using, you know, the highlighter tool on the Promethean board to say, okay, look at what the, what's the path generally doing with these dots. Um, what we're doing today is we're going to take this path that I drew really wide with the highlighter and we're going to narrow it down to a straight line. Okay, narrow it down to a straight line. And that line, oops, is called the line of best fit. I'll take the highlighting out. Okay. Now, that green highlighted area was okay. It gave us a general idea of the path of the data. But the red line that I just drew, the point of it is to have a more specific uh, pattern and more specific line of the data. And here's what trend lines are used for. Okay, what if you are a scientist um, tracking the Black Panther population because if it falls below, say, this dashed line here, then the, the Black Panthers would be considered endangered. And as a scientist, you would need to step in and the scientific community would need to do things like um, set up breeding programs in zoos or um, change some hunting laws or whatever of that particular animal to make sure that the population can regain itself, okay? Um, so by this trend line that I drew, it's just more specific. It's more accurate than that green um, highlighted area. What the red line shows me is that in the year 2020, as long as everything stays the same, probably will not reach endangered levels. Now, do you notice this dot right here? I would consider, when I had the highlighting up here, I would have considered that an outlier. So it didn't get included in the green highlight. And likewise, when I'm drawing a line of best fit, I am ignoring all of those um, outliers because those are exceptions to the rule. And remember I've said over the last couple of days, we don't make decisions about data based on outliers because those are exceptions, okay? So looking at our notes, What is a line of best fit? It is a straight line that best models the data. Okay. A trend line is another word for the line of best fit. Why do we draw them? Um, it's to estimate other data points. Okay. If we want to know to uh, into the future what we think the data is going to do. Um, what values we might expect that we're going to use that trend line. What if there's an outlier? Well, like I just said, when you're drawing the line, you can ignore it. You're trying to fit the majority of the data. A trend line is like an estimate. You're not going to get exact answers from the trend line, but you're getting a better estimate than with that green highlighted zone. Okay. Um, I'm going to expect that you guys are pretty fussy about drawing these lines. Okay, um, on the flip side of that, I will tell you that in each of my three classes, when I've drawn the trend lines, although they are extremely close to each other, they are not exactly the same each time. Okay, now important to remember this will come up on your homework. We threw a couple curveballs in there. We have some data that does not make a particular um, pattern. It doesn't go up or down. It's uh, no association. It's kind of like your shoe size predicting how you're going to do in math. There's no pattern to that. And if there's no pattern to the data, 
There's no association. You cannot draw a trend line. Okay? Very important. You must use, now I say the word ruler here, but you're not measuring anything, okay? You just need to use something to help you draw a completely perfect straight line. You should not be taking your pen or pencil and eyeballing it. You should be using something straight. A ruler is great, um, but the edge of an envelope or a book or um, you know something that you have at home that is straight, the edge of your folders, anything like that that is perfectly straight that you can hold still to draw your line is required. If you draw them freehand, I will know, okay? In you, human mind, the human hand cannot draw a perfectly straight line as well as a straight edge. So you can't do that, okay? You're going to use that to draw a line that seems to follow the data, some points above and some points beneath the line. But, guys, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to be picky about this. I'm gonna, you may be drawing, I would recommend you do this in pencil because you may start drawing a line, you lift up your ruler and look at it and be, say to yourself, oh, you know, I don't, I don't think that's good enough yet, okay? So let me show you what good trend lines look like and then we'll look at some crappy ones, okay? So let's see here. All right, so here's a good trend line. All right, because it goes right through the data, okay? I have some points below the line, some points above the line. It's just kind of going right through the middle. All right, now, some students get very hung up on how many dots does it touch? Well, it doesn't have to touch any. This is a great trend line, and it's not touching any of the dots. Okay, so it's not about how many dots you touch. Right, you'll drive yourself crazy trying to do that. All right. Now, let me draw some bad ones. Okay. That is not a good trend, trend line because it's too high up. All of the dots in the graph are underneath that line. So it is too high up. Well, now it's too low. All, most of the dots are above. I mean, I have one underneath, but guys, we're really trying to get it to be half and half. Okay. This looks almost good, except that, let me draw it like that a little bit. On this end of the line, the, the left-hand side, all the dots are above. And on the right-hand side, all the dots are below. So we don't quite have the angle right. We need some dots above the line on the right-hand side, and we need more dots below. So we've got to get the angle right. So here again, I'll fix it. I'll put it right back. Okay? That looks about right. Okay? Where I have some of the points above, some of the points below. That's what you're going for. Okay, well, I'm just going to use one of these examples. All right, so we've got some data here. And drawing our trend line. Now, what sometimes can help some students is, again, using a highlighter um, to highlight the dots. All right. That can at least give you a general direction, and you don't have to do that part with a ruler. Just kind of highlight and get the general direction of the dots, and then use your ruler over that. Okay. But other than that, we're going to use our line tool, or you're going to use a um, ruler. Okay, I have a line tool, you have a ruler. And we're going to draw that line in. Now, again, the purpose of this line is to make predictions. So this is about how many minutes into something is and what the score is. So what will the score likely be at the six minute mark? So I would follow the six line up and follow the six line across. It looks to be about 30. 
What will the score likely be at the 10 minute mark? Follow the 10 line up, follow it across. Oh, it looks to be about 46. Now, be careful, because if you're working on this assignment with a friend, you are not going to have the exact same trend line. Therefore, you do not have the exact same predictions. Okay? I do not want you to make a ballpark guess for questions like this without the trend line. That's the, if, you don't, if you just make a ballpark guess without the trend line, then there's no point in drawing the trend line. Okay? So we're going to really follow it up to the trend line. Okay, if I'd asked five minutes, there's a dot on five minutes, but you go to the trend line, not the dot. Okay? Have a great day. See you next time.